You, you ready? All right, fantastic. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Costa Constantinidis, Chair of the Environmental Protection Committee, and today the Environmental Protection Committee will hold a hearing and a vote on intro 420B, a local law that will require the Parks Department to test for lead con concentration levels in areas of parks under parks jurisdiction that contain exposed soil and are used for active play or passive recreation whenever a capital project occurs in such area. Where the tests indicate that a bare soil area has a lead level at or above the limit uh, set forth in Title 40 of the Code of Federal Regulations, currently 400 parts per million, uh, DPR must cover, replace, or otherwise remediate the, the lead level in the area. Lead was ubiquitous in the environment, particularly in the air, more than 45 years ago when lead was used as an additive to gasoline. EPA commenced the phase out of lead in all gasoline in 1973. Today, lead can still be found in some soils, although lead levels in soils have generally declined over time as lead was phased out of gasoline. Based on 84 soil lead studies across 62, 62 U.S. cities, evidence suggests that soil lead quantities in city centers were highest and tended to decline towards the suburbs and exurbs of the city. The presence of lead in the environment has been reduced in all types of environmental media, but approximately 1% of all women of childbearing age still have blood levels greater than or equal to 5 micrograms per deciliter. This means the health effects of chronic low-level exposure to lead, including, including adverse reproductive outcomes, remain unaddressed. Lead crosses the placenta and has been detected in fetal brain as early as the first trimester. Uh, Evaluated blood levels in pregnancy has also been associated with adverse health outcomes, including to gestational hypertension, spontaneous abortion, low birth weight, impaired neurological development. Recent studies suggest that a maternal lead exposure invertly related to fetal growth. A large number of studies indicate that prenatal lead exposure impairs neural development. This local law would require the elimination of lead hotspots in our parks. While we've done much to eliminate lead over the years, we need to do more. This is one more important step to get away a lead from vulnerable populations and particularly our children. I recommend a yes vote on this legislation. And I want to thank our council staff here, um, Samara Swanston, our legislative attorney, uh, Nadia Johnson, our policy analyst, John Seltzer, our financial analyst, uh, Ricky Chawla, our policy analyst as well, and then of course from my team, um, uh, Nicholas Wazowski, my staff attorney. I also want to recognize that we're joined today by uh, Councilmember Kalman Yeager from Brooklyn, Councilmember Eric Ulrich from Queens, and Councilmember uh, Carlos Menchaca from Brooklyn as well. With that, I'd recommend a yes vote. William Martin, Committee Clerk, roll call vote Committee on Environmental Protection, Introduction 420B. Chair Constantinides. I vote aye. Menchaca. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, for leading this discussion, and I want to vote yes on the bill. And part of what really drives me to this conversation about lead in these spaces relating to capital projects are the massive redevelopment projects in, some, in Red Hook. And they found lead in those fields, but not because of a discovery that this bill would have caused, but because of a graduate student report about an old lead factory in one of the corners of the fields that led to more discovery. So this is, this is just not only helpful, but uh, something that relates to Red Hook in a big way. So thank you. And I'd like to be added to the bill as well as a co-sponsor. Thank you. I vote aye. Jaeger. Mr. Chair, may I be excused to briefly explain my vote? Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I congratulate the chair on uh, this wise piece of legislation. And uh, I do want to say for the record, first, um, a number of things. Number one is that it is indeed the very least we can do to require the city of New York to uh, remediate its own uh, uh, properties um, at its own cost, uh, and particularly within parks, where uh, I think it's fair to say that most of the users of the parks are either very old or very young, and uh, we're looking to protect them. I do want to state for the record, though, that my concern, although I added my name as a sponsor to the bill earlier today, and I intend to vote for it here and on the floor this week, um, I want to make sure, and uh, it is on all of us here in the council, 
to make sure that the Parks Department, which is famous for turning a six-month project into a six-year project, doesn't uh, turn these projects into 12-year projects simply because it has to spend five minutes looking for lead. And I think the Parks Department, it's fair to say that we're not alone in, at this committee. Um, most members of the council probably feel the same, that Parks takes far longer than is necessary to do the simplest of projects. And uh, I do have a concern about uh, whether or not this would unnecessarily elongate it, much like my words here today are unnecessarily elongating this hearing. Uh, but I do want to make sure that that's stated on the record because when it happens, I want us to all be able to go back to this transcript and then go to parks and say, stop playing around, do your job, and do it right. And with that, I proudly vote aye, Mr. Chair, and I congratulate you and honor you for your leadership again. Thank you. Ulrich. Yes. By vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, item has been adopted by the committee. Uh, thank you all for your comments and your thoughtfulness about this, and I uh, look forward to partnering with all of my colleagues. And if we can leave the vote open for a few minutes to accommodate some of my other colleagues who are in the next room. Thank you so much.